It's Tuesday, the 28th of May, 2019. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and it's time for an Orville update. We've had a record-breaking amount of rain here for the month of May, the last half of the month of May, and to date, the Oroville Reservoir is at 894 feet, five to six feet from being full. Since the 14th of May, when rain began, the reservoir has risen five feet, from 889 feet to 894 feet. Currently, the Hyatt Power Plant has been ramped down to 5,000 CFS as operators want to fill up the reservoir to full here for the month of June. Inflows right now are averaging about 12 to 13,000 CFS. So first let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Julianne uh, to get these rainfall total amounts here from the Blanco Lirio Global Headquarters rain gauge and weather station at the 3,200 foot level here in the foothills of the Sierra. And then let's go inside and look at the real time data and see how this hydrology is working at Oroville. Julianne, what do we have for the month of May for rain? We have three inches, one inch and three quarters, one inch and three. So three quarters plus three quarters is? One and a half. And three Four, five inches plus an inch and a half is? Six and a half inches. And what is that? <laughs> That's narwhal. The amount that the level of the Oroville Reservoir changes over a given amount of time or over a given amount of precipitation or runoff depends mostly on what operators do with the outflow control of Oroville. Right now that outflow is still being controlled by the Hyatt Power Plant. If in the event that they need to, the main spillway is ready and fully operational to spill water out of the Oroville Reservoir. Now let's look at the real-time numbers on the California Data Exchange for Oroville Dam. Here we are today, the 28th, at about 894 feet. Inflows between 10 and 12,000 CFS, up to 13,000 CFS briefly outflows ramp down to about 5,000 CFS. Now let's go look at the monthly, or correction, daily Oroville data here. Looking now at the daily data from Oroville Dam for a 30 day period, 428 to current, we can see inflows peaked out at the end of April, close to 20,000 CFS, and have been tapering down until precipitation began at Oroville on or about the 15th of May. Outflows have been held fairly steady, 11,000, 10,000, up to about 13,000 during the rain event and now ramping down significantly down to about 6,000 CFS to catch that water and fill it up. You can click on any of these blue highlighted fields for further information, further data. So let's look at the, the inflows. Inflows for a 28 day period. There was no rain here towards the uh, end of April and the beginning of May. This is all just snow runoff as we peaked out of the snow runoff here at about the end of April at close to 20,000 CFS. Here the rain began in the middle of May so we're adding rain plus snow runoff to the total inflows. Let's go back 120 days look at the whole rain season, you can see the inflows peak out in February where we get the most of our rain. And then here we are at the end of April, no precipitation occurring 
yet the peak snow melt peaking out here towards the end of April and then tapering off significantly. And then the last bit of rain that we've had here in May. Looks like the peak inflow this year was only 50,000 CFS. Remember when the spillway broke, the peak inflow was, uh, well, let's go take a look. Down in this field here, you can put in a date to get historical data. And here we are looking back at uh, 2017. Peak inflow, which coincided right about the time the spillway failed, over 150,000 CFS. Those are huge numbers. Now let's take a look at the outflow data. 30 day period, running at about 11,000 CFS, ramped up a bit for the rain event here in May, up to 13 or so thousand CFS, and then dropping way down to today, 6,000 CFS. Let's go back and look at the whole year, or the whole rain season, 120 days. Here's the outflows for a 120 day period. And here's where the spillway was tested at 25,000 CFS early in April. Take a quick look at the precipitation at Oroville. Remember, this is just at the Oroville Dam. Doesn't represent the watershed itself. For the last 30 days, here we can see the rain that we got in May. Let's back that up for the whole rain season. And again, we can see most of our precipitation occurring in the month of February and then steadily dropping off. But this amount of rain in May was a record amount of rain for our area for the month of May. Also available here in the CDEC is river information. Let's take a look at the Feather River. The Feather River near Gridley is located downstream of the Oroville complex and upstream of Yuba City and the Yuba River influence confluence. When we go back and look at the real-time data, we have outflow and river release numbers. The river release numbers are is all the water coming out of the Oroville complex, currently about 6,000 CFS. That's defined up here in the comments, which includes water being released out of the Thermalito after bay back into the Feather River. So at the Feather River near Gridley, elevation 92 feet, with a monitor stage of 95 feet, flood stage of 103.8 feet. There was the peak stage of record 100.1 back in 1986, which did result in some flooding. Today, we're looking at about 77 feet down to about 75 feet. Here we are, local time, and here's the forecast. So it doesn't look like they're planning on spilling any water out of the main spillway over the next couple of days. So that's a full 20 feet of room in the Feather River for additional runoff. Plenty of room. Now let's take a quick look at the Oroville Reservoir watershed, which consists primarily of the three forks of the Feather River, north, middle, and south, which include a series of reservoirs, primarily PG&E reservoirs used for power. These are primarily pass-through reservoirs that have small diversion dams on them these reservoirs are not capable of storing additional water. They do not have spillway gates. They simply fill up and flow over. The North Fork of the Feather River, where most of the high flows for Oroville come from, is also PG&E's staircase of power system designed to create electric power for the, for the region. And so reservoirs like Almanor and Butt Valley are connected by a series of tunnels. In fact, this entire river system is connected by a series of tunnels and penstocks that runs, collects this water and runs it through a series of small power plants, all adding up 
to a large gener electrical generation capability along the North Fork of the Feather River. But the bottom line is there is no storage capability above Oroville Reservoir. There's no way to stop water from flowing into Oroville. It simply fills up, runs through the penstocks, and flows into the Oroville Reservoir. So what does all this mean? Even with temperatures rising, as this cold weather leaves the area, the peak snow melt runoff occurred back in April. And with the Hyatt power plant running at five turbines with a capability, a full flow capability of over 16,000 CFS, outflows out of Oroville will continue to be controlled primarily by the Hyatt power plant. Operators are going to want to top this reservoir off right up to 899, 900 feet. If they need to, the main spillway at Oroville is fully functional and ready to operate at any time. I talked to DWR and they are expecting a complete uh, report on the performance of that spillway during its run back in early April up to 25,000 CFS. That report should be out in two weeks. As soon as we get that, we'll let you know. See you here. To get the latest updates from the Blanco Lirio channel, check your notification setting by tapping on the bell next to the subscribe button. Thank you.